like my decisions to come with consequences, and the Dark Pictures Man of Medan presents some strong ones with potential outcomes like this. <laughs> Unlike developer Supermassive Games' greatest horror hit to date, the cheesy Until Dawn, Man of Medan is a serious and brooding horror game that starts off too slow but maintains a welcome sense of dread in its latter half. A meaningful choice and consequence system makes a second or even third five-hour playthrough alluring, particularly when playing online co-op and potentially screwing each other over. We have to get free right now. <sighs> There's a lot of horror-flavored glee to be found in Man of Medan, even in a story that takes itself rather seriously. If we just go down and take a look, Who's gonna know? Where Until Dawn played like a pastiche of an 80s slasher and a creature movie, Man of Medan is aiming for more mature psychological horror. Centered around a cast of young diving wannabes who end up stranded on a mysterious World War II freighter, it does a great job of building tension with its grim atmosphere and regular sudden shocks. <laughs> but it lacks the character of its predecessor. In a game with such a fun concept, I could have used a little more humor. There's only one way to get your sea legs, and it comes in a can. It doesn't help that Mad and Medan starts at a glacial pace. The first couple of hours of a five-hour playthrough are devoted to slowly familiarizing us with the characters' relationships and the controls. Fortunately, its claustrophobic latter half is well worth the wait, though it left me wondering why Supermassive didn't kick off the real horror stuff it's so good at much sooner. <laughs> The story's po-faced sincerity translates to a weaker cast of characters. Supermassive has moved away from Until Dawn's campy cast of horror stereotypes to a gang that's more firmly based in reality. They're mostly unremarkable, with a couple of exceptions, Sean Ashmore's fun-loving Conrad and Chris Sandiford's jittery Brad. But loving all the cast has never really mattered in a genre where half the fun is watching all of them get murdered. Even characters who are dull on the outside are full of blood and guts on the inside and die they will, repeatedly. There doesn't seem to be a particular uniting theme to Mad of Medan's collection of nasties other than they scream a lot, but they're effectively unnerving. The gore here is pretty impressive too. I can't say such inventiveness translated to the ship itself, which is made up of a series of bland and uninspired corridors. Fixed camera angles mean directing characters through doorways is awkward, which became a little irritating when I was lost, which was frequently because all the corridors look, well, the same. All these hallways look exactly alike. What in God's name is this? Of course, the real raw meat of Man of Medan comes with shaping these characters' fates through the decisions you make. These come from building or shattering relationships with dialogue choices, exploration to reveal crucial story-changing items, and making your own decisions on the fly, some of which will change your character traits. The former seem to have more straightforward repercussions, while the consequences of your ever-changing traits are a little more opaque. I couldn't tell if suddenly becoming decisive or cowardly meant anything on a storytelling level. For the most part, though, consequences and Man of Medan did feel directly tied to my actions, whether they be minor or a major decision. So much of the joy of this type of game comes from playing it again to push and prod at its systems. If you do want to play through again, I highly recommend you play online with a friend. Its story is a delight to play through when you're both controlling one character in the group and experiencing it from different perspectives, plus there are sequences in the co-op mode I did not see in single player. The question is, will you play nice together to save everyone, or will one of you do their absolute best to make the worst decisions possible? I had the most fun playing this way and delighted in my co-op partner's unexpected choices. <laughs> Mad of Medan lacks the campy charm of Until Dawn, and as a result its relatively dull cast and dull corridors don't create the same atmosphere of fun, but it still offers an unnerving horror adventure with consequences that felt directly linked to my actions. If you can get through its slow beginning twice, playing through with a co-op partner is a blast as you both properly explore its many branching storylines. For more on Mad of Medan, check out the first 19 minutes of gameplay and some co-op. And for everything else, stick with IGN.